Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy. For today's video, we've brought you a car from a Chinese EV maker you've almost certainly heard of, BYD. This car, the 2022 BYD Yuan Plus, is going to be hitting some English-speaking markets very soon. We're not sure exactly which English-speaking markets, but we do know we're the first foreign media to get our hands on it, and we're here to show you everything you need to know. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheels Boy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. The front of the BYD UN Plus will look familiar to anyone who's seen our video of the BYD Han sedan that we put out almost a year and a half ago now. This thing has, however, the latest generation of BYD's design language known as Dragon Face 3.0. Get ready to hear the word dragon quite a few times because it's mentioned a lot when it comes to the design of this car. Either way, here in the center you have this large kind of silver element that is known as the dragon's beard which flows into these very nice blue accented front headlights. Overall, it's definitely got the look of an EV. The side styling of the BYD UN Plus has a nice kind of sculpted look to it that I like very much, as do I like the rear roof line. The dominant feature, however, has to be this panel right here on the deep layer. This is the Dragon Scales. It's quite nice when it catches the sunlight and it offers a way to break up the side view of this car. On the rear, we have another Dragon feature, the Dragon Crystal One Piece LED tail light. The feature I like about this one is the kind of layers of uh, plastic in here that give it a little bit more of an intricate look when you get up close. If we open up the rear hatch, we don't have any official numbers from BYD as to the actual volume of this, but I will say it is very practical. The rear roof line does cut a little bit into space, but as you can see by the amount of stuff we've loaded in, all Chinese New Year type gifts, there is still plenty of space back here. This vehicle has quite a bit in common with the BYD EA1, starting with the fact that they both ride on BYD's ePlatform 3.0. This is their latest electric vehicle architecture. That means it supports 800 volt charging. If you could possibly find an 800 volt charger, I'd love to know where they are. And it also has BYD's blade battery technology. It's also the only car in this class that has a heat pump, which is interesting. It means on a day like this where it's cold, it has better uh, electric performance battery range the other thing they have in common is one of the most interesting interiors I've ever seen on a car. There are so many details. I want to show them all to you, but that would take way too long. I'm going to give you what I think are the most interesting ones. But before we get to that, let's talk about some basic information. Sitting in front of me is a 5-inch instrument cluster screen accompanied by a 15.6-inch main infotainment screen. This being a BYD, of course, it can spin from landscape to portrait and portrait back to landscape. This thing also has wireless charging pad and other features like adaptive cruise control with stop and go and other kind of uh, the electronic safety features that you usually expect on a car in this price category in 2022. But enough about adaptive cruise control and wireless charging pads, let's talk about what I think really matters about the interior of this car, and that is the absolutely fascinating design language. So this thing is supposed to be inspired by fitness and music. The overall look, especially of this dashboard, it's very organic and flowing. There's very little flat surfaces. When it comes to the fitness influences that I mentioned, this area here, known as the dragon's beard, yes, dragon's beard on the front, dragon's beard on the inside as well, this pattern is supposed to be inspired by uh, muscle fibers. You also have influence of fitness here when it comes to the gym workout culture, when it comes to the air vents. These are supposed to look like dumbbells. On the door as well, these door handles, both front and rear, look to me to be inspired by something like, I don't know, a, a barbell or some other fitness equipment. I'm not entirely sure. Then there comes the music influence. The main thing, and the thing that is probably the most fascinating thing on this interior is on the door pocket. The speaker and door pocket have these three red strings, almost bungee cord-like things that connect them. Well, 
if you strum them, they make different notes, three different notes. So not only does it look like a guitar, you can kind of play it like a guitar. That goes very well with this. Yes, this car does have in-car karaoke. And it works pretty well. Capping it all off, and oh, hold on, sorry. Capping it all off, in my opinion, are these door handles up here. This is a door-mounted speaker. This right here is how you open the door. You take your hand and pull back like that to release. Never seen anything like it before. Finally, when it comes to the other things, the dragon-inspired interior on the seats here, these are also supposed to look like dragon scales. Genuinely, there's no end to the interesting details that this interior has. In case you were wondering, rear passengers also get their own guitar to bother the driver with. They also have the same kind of gym-inspired door handle and opening mechanism. In terms of space, the back seat of this compact electric SUV has a decent amount, especially when it comes to leg room. Headroom, also pretty good, though a little bit tight, maybe a little bit tighter than some of the other cars in this category we've driven. What you do get to enjoy, both front and back seat passengers, is this very large sunroof up above you. Down here, we have two USB charging ports. The most recent BYD that we drove on this channel was a 2020 BYD Tongue, and I did have some issues with the, with the way that car drove. The acceleration, that aspect of its performance, no problems at all. But the suspension and the steering, I felt the steering was very vague, video game-esque, and I felt that the suspension could have been better damped, a little bit more comfortable. It didn't help that that car rode on 21, I think maybe 22 inch wheels, but putting that aside, I would say that this car, two years later is a genuine improvement over that one. The rear suspension, the multi-link rear suspension is apparently an all new generation from BYD and it rides very, very comfortably, especially considering this car's price point, which is about 21 to 24,000 US dollars here in the Chinese market. The steering too has been improved. This is by no means kind of very tactile feeling, but it does feel more direct and the front wheels feel more responsive compared to the tongue. Again, that's probably due to the smaller wheels and also this is a smaller platform, but I do wanna give them credit for having made progress in these two years. Then again, that's not particularly surprising. This is the Chinese car market. Two years is an eternity huge progress can be made in just that small amount of time. I mentioned that I had zero problems with the way that the BYD tongue accelerated, and that's also true of the UM Plus. It doesn't see, achieve quite the same levels of acceleration, but that's not surprising. This thing still has a very respectable, especially for this class, zero to 100 kilometer per hour time of 7.3 seconds. That's achieved using a single front mounted electric motor, making 150 kilowatts and 310 Newton meters of torque. That's 200 horsepower and 230 pound feet. This vehicle is available with two different battery packs. The first is a 50 kilowatt and these are kilowatt hour, and the second is a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. Those deliver 430 and 510 kilometers of CLTC range, respectively. Keep in mind that CLTC is China's domestic EV range standard, as opposed to WLTP um, or NEDC. As we mentioned at the beginning of this video, BYD says that this car is going to be made available in some English-speaking countries soon. Which English-speaking countries? We don't know. Could be the UK, could be Australia. I mean, look, it could be the United States. Probably not. What we do know, having driven it, is that if it comes to your market, it's certainly worth a look, if only so you can play the in-car guitar. Thank you very much for watching our video today. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, links in the description below. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.